thank you very much for being here. Uh, first question, just to start, I'm going to ask you your name and your profession. Yeah, my name is David Storer. I uh, work at the Fiat Research Center in Italy, and I'm an engineer. Why did you come here today? Because there's a, a workshop, um, a meeting with different professionals and experts in the field of uh, electromobility, electric vehicles in general. And because I'm involved in some of these activities in this area, I decided to join the workshop. Can you explain uh, how you're involved in this area? Well, yes. I mean, I work in, uh, in a company, Fiat. We make small vehicles. Uh, I work in the research centre of this company. And the research centre of Fiat is very much involved in this debate and discussion about electromobility in general and the future business pot potential for electric vehicles. Have you learned something today? Um, well, yes. I mean, it's very interesting to speak to other, let's say, experts in the field, those involved in the in the area. Uh, I have to say I'm quite familiar with the discussion. Uh, we still have to reach a conclusion. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting and I guess I have learned something today, yes. From your point of view, um, do you think electrical vehicle transition is taking a long time? Um, I think it will take a long time. I think it's taking the time that we as a company expect it's going to take. Um, I mean, as an example, let's think of the Toyota Prius. And the Toyota Prius has been on the market, I think, for over 15 years. And now it's really becoming a very successful um, product. Um, and, you know, our projections are that electromobility is going to take something similar in terms of time frame. Do you have uh, maybe an explanation on why it's taking so long? Well, it's uh, it's actually taking hundreds of years because, well, at least a hundred years because the first electric vehicles were developed approximately hundred years ago. Uh, it's a long process. It's a long process because you have to get the right mix of uh, technology, cost, uh, and customer expectations, demands, uh, awareness, education. There's a whole series of issues, not to mention the infrastructure, and also the fact that we're in a moment which is quite difficult from a financial perspective. We need to preserve jobs, we can't make mistakes in the products that we launch onto the markets. And of course, when we're talking about big investments in infrastructure, which all the new, let's say, mobility solutions require, they require significant investment either in the recharging infrastructure for electric vehicles or, let's say, refueling infrastructure for talking about hydrogen <coughs> or even, even methane vehicles. Um, you know, it's quite difficult to always justify, let's say, the investments in these infrastructures in terms of, um, let's say, the economic returns in the near or long term. You mentioned um, <coughs> other other possibilities like methane, like uh, hydrogen. Is electrical vehicle really the main alternative? Um, <coughs> at this moment in time, probably not. Um, there are other ways, let's say, of reducing CO2 emissions or the dependency on, on oil, or in general, let's say, decrease the usage cost of vehicles by following other routes. Um, so we're talking about basically making vehicles in general more efficient, recovering energy, then looking at other forms of fuels and propulsion systems. Uh, as a company, we've invested a lot and we believe a lot in methane, compressed natural gas, uh, because it's a fuel which is readily available. There's already an infrastructure for this. I mean, we need to perhaps reinforce the, let's say, the refueling part of the infrastructure, but the distribution of methane is already widespread across Europe. There are lots of reserves of methane. It has an immediate positive impact on the environment in terms of CO2 emissions. Uh, the performance is very similar to a normal vehicle. So there's lots of reasons why, as let's say a bridging technology or a, let's say a, a short to medium term solution in terms of reducing CO2 emissions, uh, why we should let's say, believe in this and, and work towards uh, pushing this type of technology onto the market. Um, so that's certainly one area that, uh, you know, we should be looking at. Um, we should be developing, perhaps buying into a little bit more over the short to medium term. Uh, we see electromobility as a medium to longer term solution. What was your reaction to be um, invited here by uh, MBA survey participants, so by a, a school of economics and management? 
Well, of course, I, I, I'm actually involved directly in the Capira project, which is, you know, the basis of this involvement of the Solvay Business School. So, you know, I knew about this, this meeting, this event for, for several weeks. Um, and obviously, I, I see it as being a very important part of the process. I mean, we need to, I mean, one of the things which is really lacking in terms of the electromobility debate is a very solid uh, business model or more than one business model that we can all really believe in we are, all can really buy into and that's let's say lacking a little bit there are several alternatives several proposals but one convincing argument doesn't seem to exist so the, you know the more work on this topic the better and certainly you know business schools such as Solvay ideally placed also talk to the experts and those that can sort of let's say determine the future of electromobility you know that's a that's a positive thing so yeah i i am very much in favor of this type of intervention and this type of collaboration let's say with business schools uh, and it seems to be very successful from what i've seen today it's uh, you know it's working very well